Tintagel is one of the only places in Cornwall that allows the van life community to stay in their vehicles overnight in a number of their car parks. But how do the locals really feel about their small village being taken over by van lifers in the summer months? Do you ever get any problems from camper vans being in the car park? Any noise or anything or disturbances? Um, and what exactly is there to do in this small Cornish village? There is a pub here as well, so... And uh, another pub. Another pub as well. Oh, and another, another pub. One. Today I'm heading up to Tintaggio. Apparently they're really friendly to camper vans, so that's pretty much all the car parks that allow you to stay overnight, from what I've been told, but we'll see when we get there. Now it is raining and I am meeting a friend up here, so if the weather doesn't cheer up, it's gonna be quite cozy inside the van. However, he does have his own van, so it's not like we're gonna be completely in each other's pockets, but you can't help the weather, can you? Bonjour. Trying to figure where we're going to park. <laughs> There's a car park just down there. Is that one of the ones that you can stay in overnight? Yeah. I'll go park up and then come and meet me in a minute. Okay, so this one says motorhomes overnight five pounds, which is uh, a bit of a bargain, really. It's just nice that they actually welcome motorhomes, you know? How's it going? Jeez, it's freezing cold down here. Well, it's cold, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> I must have put, packed every single jacket I possibly yeah. had just in case. Yeah, sorry, apologies for the colour of my van. No, I quite like it. It's not quite finished. I like the wheels. Yeah, See, so I nearly got these Jesus. as opposed to those. I saw I watched your video again when you went to Reading. Yeah. And because I think they are the CC2. Yeah, no, the CC1s. One, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was between the, the two of them, but um, and I went for the trail terrain. Right. Yes, I'm going to be noisy. saying, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was going to speak to you about the tyres, actually, because these are really good. I've not actually uh, talked about this yet on the channel, but some, I've been getting lots of questions about whether the, the all-terrains are any good. And they seem to be fine, but they can be a little bit twitchy in the wet. Just okay. a little bit, almost like wheel spinny, which is, you know, not what you would expect. I mean, they did kind of say to me at Rogue Alloy when I went and got them fitted that um, there is a chance that, you know, they can be a bit sketchy in the wet but i think with these i because obviously between nottingham and here yeah. there's a lot of motorway yeah and i feel really confident with them on same with that on the motorway yeah, it's fine. absolutely fine yeah. but as far as it comes as soon as you start going down the country lanes yeah. or if you hit like um you know some of the like white lines in the road yeah. it, they tend they to are. be a bit spinny yeah partially unfinished sort of finished nice i think with these they're never finished are they no there's always bits something mine's ever going to be finished to be fair you know um, but but they're okay. I've turned the bed round so it's lengthways. Right. Because that way I'd sleep diagonal. How much taller than me are you? I'm well. I'm five eleven, stroke right. six foot. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, I'm what five eight and a half, five nine. So you fit so, perfectly between the two yeah. walls, whereas I don't. Oh, let me cut that. I'm five. <laughs> I'm actually six foot tall. He's like really tall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a real wheel drive, isn't it? Yes. Because I can tell because the, the, the Ah, is higher. that, why is yours different? Darren's van is actually a rear wheel drive. So what that means is that the floor is actually quite a bit higher up. It's mainly just to do with the transmission that goes to the back wheels. But I'll show you in a minute yeah. the difference with mine. But when, when you're inside, I mean, this probably would have been fine for me to be honest, but I was saying to Darren, the reason why I originally went for the front wheel drive was because I wanted that little bit extra floor space just so that I could hang like surfboards on the roof or whatever, but I'm probably not going to do that anyway. But yeah, it kind of works well though with the step. After comparing vans for about 20 minutes, we decided to see just what Tintagel had to offer. Darren even thinks he may have fixed my door issue. <laughs> Darren's cracked it. He knows why my van keeps beeping all the time. So we I've always been told that it's the connections, right? And looking at my curtain here, I think the car has been getting caught in the connections, which means the horn goes off. We're gonna go get a coffee and maybe check out the castle. Right, let's see if we fixed it, ready? 
I think you're right. I, you know, I think you're right, mate. <laughs> so King Arthur's car park. We're gonna have to give this a rating in the morning as to like just how quiet it is and how welcoming everybody seems to be. Well, every single car park here allows motorhomes. Yeah. And it's not expensive. So if you go on to park for night, it's literally like every single car park here says that you can park, even though the Cornwall Council car park down there, as I was driving in, I passed it, it there was a sign up saying no overnight camping. Okay. So that's probably the only one, but you know, what to expect from the council. There is a pub here as well, so we might have to get a pint later. And uh, another pub. Another pub as well. Oh, and another, another pub. one. <laughs> so we might have to not have a non-alcoholic beer tonight. Absolutely. So there's a... There's another car park. Let's just check this car park out. Yeah. So this is the, the castle car park. It does say all day five pounds, but it does say on here no overnight parking. But I mean, this is probably the one you're going to want to stay in. Look at this view. I mean, to be honest, this car park's not actually that level anyway. So you'd probably end up rolling out of bed anyway. We decided to visit the remains of the castle, even though the rep really wanted us to join the English heritage. Yeah, I'll join next time when I go back home. If you're anything like me and you're afraid of heights, you probably wouldn't want to cross this bridge. To be fair, this bridge is big enough that it's actually not that scary. It is a little bit windy today though. I think Cornwall is one of the only places that I'd, I'd like to go back to 300 years ago. Last time you went caving. Yeah. I'll go through, tell you what it's like. Just you tell me how long. Oh, wet feet. I haven't got a change of um, shoes either, so if I do get fall in. Well, you can come through if you want, but you might get wet. There's not really anything here other than a, another part of the walkway. I'll save you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, now it's, uh, it wasn't really a lot there. Oof, it's slippery though. Make sure you're recording so I fall over. That's content. <laughs> this is what happens when you've got little legs. This is going to be so eloquent. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> I think these tourists thought I was a professional photographer and asked me to take their photo. Are you a professional? No. Uh, we're right. It was a focus, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, we paid £16 each. Yes. We've taken some pictures of some American tourists. Yes. Um, professionally, no doubt. As well, well, they thought it was professional. Yeah. Wait till they see the pictures. <laughs> It's not really much of a castle here, is it? There was a few ruins of a castle and a nice rickety bridge, a nice statue of King Arthur, and... Uh, to be fair, when I drove, I thought that was the castle. That's the church? Yes. It's the church over here. Yeah, the turret. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, well. Yeah, that's proper full, that. Yeah. Oh, this is the priest's... Priest's Yeah, that tail. was his house. Cool. Are you on tiptoe? Oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> but see, look, that looks really cool from up here. Huh? Yeah, so that's, we, that must be just behind where the ticket office yeah. was. Because there was some steps all the way down to the sea. Right. 
check that out. Look at this. What a place. So, because we've because we've got somewhere actually properly to stay tonight that we know we're not, we're not going to get moved on. They allow camper vans. We're going to go to the pub and get a beer. Indeed. What would be your beer of choice? Guinness. Guinness. Well, that's not very Cornish, though, is it? No. Guinness is fine. I'll probably just have a nah. a rat there or something. Rat, <laughs> I, to be fair, I like rat. <laughs> so I was saying about how great this place is because of the amount of pubs there are. But now we're like sport for choice. This one looks quite welcoming. It's, yeah. it's kind of like oldie worldy. It's like house pub, house pub, house yeah. pub. Yeah. Hello. Got a rattle. I will have a rattle. Give me two pints of rattle, please. Yeah. Thanks for the beer. Cheers, Sean. Yeah, fantastic. Right, so here's the thing, right? It is currently quarter past four and we've had two beers now. So definitely not going anywhere else tonight. Probably not even gonna cook in the van. We might have to find somewhere to eat. I'm not sure if this place does food or there's plenty of pubs around, so we might just eat there. Yes. Cheers. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep knocking because everything in Cornwall <laughs> is designed for people to knock it. Yeah. Look at yeah. that. Look, it's proper night time now. How long were we in that pub? I don't know, but it's probably still 3 <laughs> 30. <laughs> no. The sunset was okay as well, looking yeah. at the sky. Well, we missed that because we were in the pub, but yeah. you know. <laughs> right, so we need to head back to the van nice and quick simply because, you know, you pay up until five o'clock and then you've got to pay another five pounds to then stay till the morning. So, them's yes. the rules. Right, so before we head out to dinner, I think I need to give you a tour of Darren's van. Oi, oi. Good evening. <laughs> Look at this. This is actually, do you know what? Now the lights are on in here, it's pretty cozy, isn't it? It's nice, because I've got somewhere to sit and eat. That's me double hob. But if you listen quietly, can you hear it? What, the fridges? No. Why is it? What, what the, oh, that's the diesel heater. And that's how quiet I've got it. So I'm still in the situation where I'm trying to work out where I'm going to put a diesel heater in my van. And um, from where Darren's put his is actually under the kitchen. So this could work actually. Just in the kitchen here. And it's literally just under there. The only downside of where his pipe goes is that it does eradicate a lot of the space behind but then it comes out here and that is kicking out a lot of heat. Yeah. So tell me about this TV, is this 12 volt? It is, just 12 volt, put a socket there and that's more for Thomas, you know, really, because. It's a good size though, isn't it? It's okay, it's kind of pointless. I wouldn't have had a TV, I don't think you've got one, have you? I built that shelf above my bed. Yes. And I'm gonna put a projector up there and then have a pull down screen. That's sort of my plan going forward. Um, only because I just didn't want like a fixed TV. Yeah. But, you know, TVs are great because it just means that on your rainy days or anything like that, you've still got something to watch. Max Air fan. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lights in here. The only reason I've left this out is I'm toying with the idea of a 5G aerial. Right. On top to increase Wi Fi when you're at places like this, yeah. for instance. Or 5G signal, you know, um, not Wi-Fi. So you've got two fridges under, underneath the bed here. One's on, looks like it's on a freezer setting. Yeah, so this one's freezer. So that's whatever needs to be frozen. Yeah. Bait. And that is full of milk and beer. Is there any proper beer in there? I bought, to be fair, Sean, I bought you a, um, a Here's to Change. What is that? It's an IPA. So we are trying, these oh. aren't non-alcoholic for a change. This is the- it's proper IPA. This is the toast, <laughs> here's the change. Citrusy and hoppy, which is always pleasant, but also planet saving. Yes. But more importantly, 4.5%. Is <laughs> that what it is? Yeah. I've just noticed on the back, raise a toast, save the world, cheers. But all being said, it's all about the taste, isn't it? So. 
I'm glad that exploded in your van and not mine. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> Enjoy your wee. Thank you very much, you too, sir. <laughs> Right, so Darren's gonna take a wee in his van. I'm gonna go for a wee, and then we're gonna go get some food somewhere rather than cooking in our vans because, I don't know, we probably started drinking too early, so now we're, uh, we just wanna go out for dinner. It's like a proper date, proper man date, you know? Let's get the curtains drawn before we go out, just cause it makes it easier. So I literally bought these things the other day. It's kind of like a, reusable they call them like reusable ties but they're pretty good i've been using them as curtain ties for the last sort of week you literally just untie them works fine stops them sliding around curtains pulled i'm just gonna literally get everything set up get my uh, blackout curtain on That's how easy that is. Why me? <laughs> what are you saying? Have I shut my door wrong? Is that why did you let me do that? I've no idea. We've solved <laughs> one problem with cruising. <laughs> so it's more stealth. Yeah. Um, but now you've got half a duvet hanging on the side of your van. Before, it's never fallen Right, so you know, remember when I was saying about how good this was? It is still good, however... You have to take it down before you close the door. Yeah, well, yeah. Or maybe. That's fine. I'll leave it down, I'll put it back on when uh, when we come back. Who designed that, Sean? I don't know, I got it off eBay. <laughs> good evening. I thought that was the bagpipes playing, isn't it? Oh, it kept clears. Look at this! Please do not touch. <laughs> I walk straight in and touch you. <laughs> About seven o'clock at night. I'm watching sunset. There was loads of other cameras there. That's a gherkin. It is, and Irish people love it. Do you not like gherkins? Right, so this is the uh, Tintagel Visitor Centre car park. And so, they allow coaches for 24 hours. Right. But not motorhomes. So, so, so what you're saying is buy a coach and turn it into a camper van? Yes. <sighs> How cosy is this? Right. Get that out of my face. Good night. How are you feeling today? I'm surprisingly okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's bigger than me, so maybe he can just handle his beer a bit better. I don't think we drank that much, though. And I woke up this morning, and I was just like, oh, I feel a bit rough. But, yeah. I, I think we had maybe had a dodgy burger. Nothing to do with the alcohol. Yeah, yeah. Was, we'll blame the burger <laughs> at that place. To clear our heads, we decided to find out just how the locals really feel about all the camper vans that visit their home every year. Do you ever get any problems from camper vans being in the car park? Any noise or anything or disturbances? Um, no, and to be honest, I actually um, live just off the car park. Oh, right, okay. And so, no, we don't hear nothing. Don't hear anything. Anything. Yeah. No, everybody does, seems happy does enough. Does it generate to. quite a bit of business? Or? It can do in the summer. Yeah. Yeah, and um, at the weekend, at the end, like at the end of the summer term, all the um, sort of like the people of my age yeah, yeah. come away for weekends. Sort of park on the Friday, lay back on the Sunday. Excellent. Good. No, it's a. We don't get any problems. We yeah. welcome it because obviously we're very seasonal and. Yeah. And does that of, sort of generate more business, more? Sort it of it year does. Round? It does help with the business. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, for us, it's a, always a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think because it, this one over here is privately owned, yeah. and this one here, 
So yeah, I think obviously they own the pub and they own another pub, so they know how much business it does generate. So yeah, yeah. yeah I think I think it's really positive. Yeah. And like I say, we have no troubles whatsoever with anybody who camps with us. I mean, what but I then the odd toilet roll might go missing. <laughs> <laughs> Since obviously COVID, a lot more people are doing staycations and they have bought camper vans and things. Yeah. It, it is, it's an expenditure in that first instance, but yeah. after that, obviously, it's an affordable holiday for yeah. most. So, yeah, I, I totally promote it. Excellent. Thanks for answering my questions. Thanks, mate. You're welcome. See you later. Later. Take care. Drive safe as well and enjoy the rest of your Cornwall trip. Yeah, we'll keep it to 60 miles an hour. Take care. <laughs> See you later. Cheers, buddy. So I guess the verdict of this place is pretty much the locals, the local businesses, encourage you to come and stay here in your camper van and stay in the car parks because it's business for them. I mean, I knew it would be, but it's just nice to hear that they don't have any problems or any issues with people emptying toilets or being reckless when they stay here. Just like to say thank you for watching and thank you to everybody who's bought me a beer through the link in the description. All of these legends here and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!